Uh, my name is Sophie Benedetto. I am here at Go to Copenhagen 2023 to tell you guys a little bit about the Phoenix Live View Web Development Framework. A uh, little, little bit about myself first. I'm a staff software engineer at GitHub where we don't use Phoenix and we don't use LiveView, um, but we do work with distributed systems and we of course do a lot of functional programming. And uh, what is it about LiveView that I think should interest uh, folks that might be tuning in today? Folks who might be a fan of functional languages who may or may not work with the Beam. I think that LiveView, uh, we're already starting to see this happen. I think we're gonna start to see this happen even more, I think it's going to drive the adoption of Beam languages into organizations and corners of our field where perhaps it's been lagging behind. And I think it's going to kind of keep functional programming relevant to web development. So in order to make that case, I'm gonna give you a lightning version of what LiveView is um, and why it is so great such that it will actually drive this adoption and keep functional languages relevant to web dev. Uh, LiveView is, like I said, a web development framework. It is part of the Phoenix uh, web dev framework, which is the sort of rails of Elixir, if you will. Um, a Phoenix LiveView is just a process. It maintains state for your single page web app on the server side in a, an immutable data structure that in LiveView is called the socket. So it's functional, uh, a mute based on an immutable data structure and it's declarative. And these are some of the reasons why it is really easy for folks to adopt. That onboarding ramp is nice and gentle. Uh, beyond that though, beyond it kind of bringing all of the benefits of the beam like fault tolerance, uh, and high degree of concurrency to web dev, it also neatly answers pretty much all of the common problems in web development today. And I'm gonna give you the list of those problems. It has answers for how to manage security in your single page application, how to do state recovery for those single page apps. Uh, what about file uploads? It's got a solution for that. It has a solution for code organization. And I think any of us that have worked with those gnarly nested React applications would be excited to hear that. It has a seamless solution for integrating even the most sophisticated and advanced bits of JavaScript functionality into what is primarily a server-side application. And it has a new and improved solution for efficiently managing really large data sets that may back your single page application. I'm going to give you like a one sentence of each of those and then hopefully leave you wanting more so that you tune into the talk itself when it is released. Uh, so one of the reasons why LiveView is such an efficient experience for users is that the WebSocket connection can be reused when users navigate between pages in your app. Uh, what that means though is you open yourself up to a security risk because you have these web requests that aren't going through the router and going through the auth logic that you may have set up in that router when users are navigating from page to page. Uh, LiveView has an answer for that. It's called live sessions. You group a set of what are called live routes together in a shared live session so that this authorization logic can be shared between your different live view pages, even if you're reusing that WebSocket connection for the fastest and snappiest experiences for your user. So that kind of answers the first of the big problems on our list. Uh, what about state recovery for single page apps? Oftentimes you'll use a single page app for something like a really complicated form, you know, step by step, those form wizards where you're sort of paging through little pieces of a form as you go. What happens if the user loses connectivity? let's say half or 99% of the way through that process, it would obviously be very devastating to them were they to lose all of that progress because of a blip in their internet connectivity. Uh, LiveView has a solution for that as well. You can store state client side in let's say local storage in your browser and LiveView presents to you a really easy to use API for plucking that state out of local storage, sending it up to the server when reconnection happens and using it to repopulate the state server side. Because again, everything is managed server side. You're gonna write server side code to operate the interactions of your single page application. You're gonna write server side code when you test that application. Your brain stays firmly on the server side and you don't need to kind of do these complicated dance of uh, working together between like a back-end team and a front-end team, complicated release life cycles to ship back-end and front-end changes. Everything is stored server-side, um, but you have these levers that you can pull to use client-side code, but again, still kind of keep your brain and the brain of your development team firmly on the server-side. Um, so that's state recovery. What about file uploads? LiveView has a file upload API with something like six lines of code. You can support multiple fancy, sophisticated file uploads, add a button to your form, 
drag and drop a file, uh, show errors, so show progress, show an image preview. All these things are baked into the Live View framework for you. Uh, I promised you code organization, especially if you're used to some of those really nested, really complex, let's say React applications. Live View offers two types of components that you can use to structure your Live View application and layer up these really beautiful, elegant, composable UIs. You can use Live Component to wrap up not only markup, but also behavior. You might use a Live Component to do something like handle a form so that the form events have one logical, neat little place in your application where they're handled and responded to. And you can use Function Components that wrap up reusable bits of markup really dynamically. So you can build something like a bootstrap style card component and use it throughout your application again and again. Uh, and you'll find that you'll build these little components and you'll, as I said, compose them together to build these really beautiful, elegant, layered UIs that are easy to maintain because everything has its own logical home. Uh, that's code integration. What about integrating code organization? Excuse me, what about integrating JavaScript? Uh, when LiveView first came out, the way that people were talking about it was very anti-JavaScript. It was very much like, hooray, we're Elixir developers, and now we definitely never have to write JavaScript, which sort of implies, boo, we hate JavaScript. Um, but first of all, LiveView is in and of itself a JavaScript framework. It has a JavaScript client that's executing on the front end, and it has the, the back end piece of the framework as well. Um, and it's possible for you to integrate your own custom JavaScript on top of that. You can use features called JS bindings and JS hooks to bring in even really sophisticated, really complex UI interactions. But the day-to-day -day JavaScript that you sort of expect your web page to be able to use to support these really common expected user interactions are now baked into the framework for you. So to do something like show or hide a modal, um, infinite scroll up, infinite scroll down, these are all things that are exposed to you through the Live View API. So you can write a handful of lines of code to get these features working. And then if you need to go beyond that and incorporate more sophisticated, more custom interactions, you, you absolutely can. So LiveView doesn't mean that you don't have to write JavaScript. It means that you don't have to write the burdensome, sort of toilsome JavaScript. It's a very declarative framework. So you're never writing JavaScript that tells LiveView how to send data up to the server or how to update the web page in response to data coming back down from the server. You just tell it what to do. You declare, I am sending this event and I am going to receive this response. Um, but you can still write all the JavaScript you want and need to get all the really fancy sort of bells and whistles on your single page applications. Uh, and LiveView makes it easy to do that. The final piece of this puzzle is efficient data transfer. LiveView has always aimed to be really efficient and be really fast for that really snappy user experience. So it's always minimized the amount of data that the server is going to send down to the client in response to user activities and user interactions, and that's helpful, and that's kept LiveView really speedy, but what if you have a really large data set? What if you're building some sort of Spotify-type web client and you've got a bazillion songs, let's say, on the server side that you're attempting to eventually feed over to the client and represent in the UI? LiveView newly has an answer for that, and it's the LiveView Streams API. With the Streams API, LiveView will actually detach large data sets from the server and store them client-side for you and expose an API so that you can update that data set, delete from it, bulk insert, override it, and so on. Um, and once again, it's declarative. You're not gonna write the code that tells LiveView how to do any of those things. You just pull those levers that the API exposes to you. Uh, so to sum it up one more time, LiveView has answers for security, state recovery, file uploads, code organization, integrating custom JavaScript, and efficient data transfer, making it uh, a really compelling web framework that, as I said, said earlier, is functional, is declarative. Um, we're seeing a lot of adoption in the Elixir community already, in the Beam community already, and we're even seeing some big organizations like Spotify a few years ago uh, start to take on Beam languages like Elixir so that they can use this web framework, um, and I expect to see that continue to happen. I expect to see LiveView um, drive Beam adoption, drive the adoption of functional languages for web development, and keep functional programming well relevant to web devs.